In the previous video, we talked about some different parts of a regular polygon. We put it inside of a circle because the circle and the polygon are going to share some points, like for example, the center point there, and these segments that connect the center point to each of the vertices, that's the radius. I draw in enough of those things, it's going to create triangles. We also defined a new segment, which is called the apothem, which is the distance from the center point to one of the sides. And notice, of course, that that is the height of the blue triangle that's right in here. Remember that the process here to find the area of one of these things is just break it up into triangles by drawing in each of the radii. When you find the area of one of the triangles, which is usually pretty easy to do, then you can just multiply it times however many triangles are created. Now, the picture that we have going on here, it's missing some sides because it's supposed to be some sort of generic in gone where we don't know how many sides in actually is. Even though if you completed this diagram, it sort of looks like it would be six sides, like it's a hexagon. So we're just going to go with the idea that this is a generic in-gon that has a side length of S and a pothom length of A. And we want to derive a formula for the area of this regular in-gon. And the idea is just like we talked about at the very beginning of this in the warm-up exercise, if it was in fact the warm-up exercise, is to find the area of one of these triangles. In this case, it's the area of this blue triangle. So the area of triangle. So to do that, if you recall, the area of a triangle is one half of the base times the height, right? So let's look at the different parts that we have in our triangle and discover which one's the base and which one's the height. So the base down here is the same thing as the side length of our regular polygon, the side length that's originally given to us. There's the base. A base and a height have to make a right angle, so the height of that triangle is the apothem length. So this is our height. So just substitute these things in here. We have area is equal to 1 half, my base is S, and my height is A. And now that's the area of one of them, that's the area of the blue one, and how many of those do I have? In general, I would have N of them, so what I would want to do is just multiply this thing by N. So now we're ready to come up with our formula, rearrange some stuff, rewrite some stuff, make it look pretty. And the area of the regular polygon looks like this. I need the area of one of these triangles, which is one half of the side length times the apothem length. And how many of those triangles do I have? We just discussed we have n of them. And you know, that's certainly an okay formula, but uh, what we usually do is we just rearrange it out of convenience and then rename something. It's all multiplication. One half is being multiplied times S times A times N, so it doesn't matter the order of those things by the commutative property. So I'm going to rearrange it like this. One half A, the apothem, times N times S. And I'm going to group up N and S together because I want you to think about what that n times s as a quantity is supposed to be. n is how many sides I have, and s is how big each one is. Assuming it's regular, that means all the sides are the same. If I take, uh, for example, I have a hexagon. It has six sides, and uh, each side is, I don't know, five. Six times five is 30. What's 30? In this case, that's referring to the perimeter. You take the number of sides that you have, you multiply it times how big each one is, that's the perimeter. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time as 1 half A, the apothem length, times P for perimeter. And there you have it, finally, the formula for the area of a regular polygon with N sides. The area of a regular N-gon with side length S is half the product of the apothem A and the perimeter P. A equals 1 half A times P. P is the same thing as N times S, number of sides times S, so you can also write it like this, 1 half of A and S. All right, so in the rest of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at individually uh, some different types of N-gons. Say it has three sides, four sides, eight sides, whatever, so that we can break down how this formula is going to apply in each of those specific cases, because not every single one of them is going to be the same. Let's start with a regular 3-gon, which we ordinarily just call an equilateral triangle. So it's asking us, what is the measure of each central angle of an equilateral triangle? 
So if I draw in each of my central angles, it looks like this. Obviously, I have three of them. The total is 360 degrees around that center point. 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. All right. Um, now then, what I'd want to do is draw in the apothem in one of these triangles. It doesn't matter which one. And when I draw in the apothem, it's going to bisect one of those central angles. And when it bisects it, 120 divided by 2 is going to give me 60 degrees for each of those. The reason why it bisects it is because I have essentially an isosceles triangle down here. And whenever you draw in the height, which is what the apothem is, it bisects the angle right up top. It creates two congruent triangles here. Okay, and uh, hey, we'll take a look. It just created a 60, 90, hmm, what's this other angle that's left over? Could it be 30? It creates a 30, 60, 90 right triangle within that uh, equilateral triangle, which is convenient because we know all about this 30, 60, 90 right triangles. If this is the apothem length, A is the apothem length, it's the short side across from the 30, then double that is going to be the length of the radius, the hypotenuse there. And then whatever the apothem length is, if I multiply it times the square root of 3, I'm going to get the longer leg for the right triangle. And in order to find the whole entire side length, then I would just double that. 2 times A times the square root of 3. Right, so that's the idea. You're going to draw in your central angles, draw in an apothem, figure out what the angles are, and maybe it's going to make a special right triangle like this one. Now, there is an alternative way to figure out the area of an equilateral triangle, which doesn't use the apothem length. Let's take a look at what that would look like right here. Let's draw an equilateral triangle. Is it perfect? It is int perfect, but, you know, we're going to go with it anyway. So that's pretty close to being equilateral. Let's draw in not the apothem, but just the altitude. Now, if you remember, this is essentially, whoops, it's polka dotted. This is essentially how we got our 30, 60, 90 triangle whenever we first defined them. We took an equilateral triangle, just cut it along one of its altitudes, and then bam, we got ourselves a Let's maybe make this in blue. A 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So let's say that for this particular problem, I'm given a side length, and whatever it is, I'll just call it S. And then that means that this shorter side of the 30, 60, 90 right triangle is half that, one half of S. And then if I take that one half of S and multiply it times the square root of 3, I get the square root of 3 over 2 times S for the length of the height. So that's the height here. And I don't have to use the apothem at all. It's super special. You're going to see in a second the squares are super special in that way too. So speaking of squares, a regular foregone. What's the measure of each central angle in a square? Let's draw them in. I've got four of these central angles. 360 divided by 4 is 90 degrees. When I draw in my apothem length, it's going to cut that in half again, and I get 45 so what kind of triangle is right here? This is a green one. It's a 45, 90, mm, 45, 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And whatever the length of the uh, the uh, apothem is, right here, the apothem, that's also going to be the base of this right triangle. Multiply it times the square root of 2. I can get the radius length if I ever needed it. Or maybe I'm given the radius length, and I can work backwards from that in order to find the area of that square. Remember, we need an apothem length. And then we also need the perimeter. Mm, okay, another kind of relationship that I can notice about the square is that the length of the apothem, what's its relationship to the whole entire side length of that square? Notice that it's exactly half, right? It's special in that kind of way that the apothem is half of the side length. Now, again, this is kind of overkill for a square because you know what? We have a pretty easy formula to use when it comes to a square, right? It's just, hmm... I've got myself a square, obviously, whatever the side length is, its area is equal to side length squared. Well, right, we have that one. Now, we may not be given that, though. We might be given instead, well, look, here's another perfect square. We might be given instead, hey, what are you doing? I don't know what you're doing at all. There you go. 
we might be given the diagonal length. And if this is s and this is s, then this is s times the square root of 2. So it's entirely possible that in our square, instead of it giving us the apothem, instead of it giving the radius or the side length, it could give us the diagonal here. But again, it makes a 45-45-90 right triangle. And this was how we defined 45-45-90 right triangles from the beginning, is by just taking half of a square. Again, these two kind of special when it comes to finding the areas of each one of those. All right, let's continue with a regular five-gon, otherwise known as a pentagon. This is where government takes place in one of these kind of shapes. So let's throw in our central angles. And I take 360 and divide it by 5. 360, that means 72, 72 degrees. Okay, and then I'll draw in my altitude like we did before. The, the, the what is it called again? Apothem. We draw in the apothem, which is going to cut one of these 72 degree angles in half to get 36 degrees. Ooh, this one's not a special right triangle, right? We have 30, 60, 90. We got 45, 45, 90. And if you're being super special, you got the 15, 75, 90 right triangle, but you don't have one with 36. So how are you going to find one of the side pieces? Like it might be giving you the apothem, but you also need the perimeter, which means that you need the little side length of this right triangle. How are you going to get it? Or maybe they give you the side length down here for the whole entire thing. How are you going to get the apothem? Well, you have a right triangle and you have one of the angles. Looks like we can use some trigonometry. And notice that we can either use this 36 degree angle or we can use the 45 degree, 54 degree angle down here at the bottom. Use either a sine ratio or a cosine ratio or a tangent ratio. Totally depends on what parts of the problem that you're given. We'll take a look at one of those here shortly. Okay, one more of these. What's the measure of the central angle of a regular hexagon? This is basically what we did at the very, very, very start of this thing. If I take each of my central angles, I get six of them. Take 360 divided by six gives us 60 degrees each. Each one of those is an equilateral triangle. Draw on the apothem, which is going to cut that angle in half, giving me 30 degrees. And then once again, I have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And then I could very easily solve based on, do they give me the apothem length? Do they give me a side length down here? Maybe they gave me the radius length. One of those things I should be able to use. And again, I'm going to call your attention to the fact that whatever the length of the radius is, since this piece right here is x, used to be 2x down here. The length of the radius and the length of the side on a regular hexagon, both of those are the same. Is that always going to be the true? No, it's only true for a regular hexagon. All right, so next what we're going to do is we got a collection of four of these regular polygons that we want to find the area. Let me challenge you to go ahead and try to give it a shot right now with our new formula. Area is equal to the apothem length times the perimeter. If you get stuck, if you... Uh, don't get stuck and you want to check your answers, just check out the next video. Well, I'll work through each one of these step by step.